Good morning. I welcome you to this worship service in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Amelia Stinson Wesley, pastor here at Memorial United Methodist Church. We are recording our worship this morning. It will be available later on our YouTube channel once it's been edited and produced. And the sermon by phone option will also be available early this week. So whether you are here in person or are joining us later via recording, we are grateful for your presence with us this morning. A couple of announcements. There are church calendars on the table in the narthex back there. If you want one, please feel free to put pick that up. We are, again, beginning um, to have a church calendar, and so that's our um, August uh, offerings. If you want to um, give your gifts, tithes, and offerings, there is a box as you enter the narthex, and then there is an offering plate here. Either of those places are appropriate. We are raising some funds to replace some of the picnic tables outside of Monday Hall, and if you'd like to contribute to that specific effort, please designate your donation with that um, accordingly. The conference website for all of Western North Carolina in the United Methodist Church has been updated this week. They have a few hitches, let's just say, along the way, um, but we will, uh, you can go to it and see it as it is um, supposed to be more user friendly, and we'll send that link out so you can um, interact with the offerings, the news, the um, information that is there. If you are bringing school supplies for the preschool, you can place them in a box that's in the church office hallway right down near the preschool. The list of their supplies that they need was in the newsletter and it is also printed on the box. We will likely send that out again when we get closer to their date of opening. Um, a reminder that we have Bible study in Spanish on Saturday evenings at 7 p.m. in Monday Hall, back behind here, and you can let Hilda know if you are interested in attending that. Are there other announcements? The United Methodist Women will meet basically right after worship at 11 o'clock. Just the executive board will meet today. Um, are there other announcements? Then let us continue to worship our God. We ask that um, everyone remain seated for this worship service. We are using some of the things we learned when we had outdoor worship as we all remain seated outside during that, those worship days. So we're doing the same thing in here in acknowledgement of the virus. So join me in the call to worship. Let us worship God who is rich in mercy, who makes us alive when we are tired. Let us worship God who is kind and loving, who gives new life out of great love for us. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is number 364, because he lives.
as we move into a time of prayer. Are the mics off? Okay, I can yell. So you have a prayer list on the back of your order of worship. So let's keep those persons in mind as we think about other prayer concerns. Willis Goodrum is home, just as an update. He is um, relaxing in his own recliner in his own home and is very pleased about that. So I heard from Ansley recently. Iva Wagner is looking to move to another rehab facility. And so when that gets established, we'll let you know where she is. Gary Reed should be home. Um, and he is going to uh, have dialysis three days a week from now on, but that has been working and strengthening him. Would the handheld mic go or would it be attached to the same thing? That's a big step. Does that work? Is that, oh, that one's working. Okay. Pat Hampton is a praise this morning. She had successful surgery, and so we give God thanks for her healing. Are there other health updates or concerns that you'd like to, to add this morning? I know that Mac and EJ are um, depositing grandchildren at various schools this weekend. Let's remember parents and grandparents who are taking children off to college and the, as, and the children who are going off to school. Yes, Angel. It's whose birthday? Did you catch that? Say again. It's Hilda's birthday. Oh, wonderful. Let's sing to Hilda. Let's sing to Hilda. Give God praise for another year of Hilda's life. Again, along the lines of students, public school doesn't begin in our county until the end of August, and our preschool won't begin until after Labor Day. But let's keep teachers in our prayers as they are preparing for students to return. Some students do go back, depends, there are year-round schools, there are early colleges and schools. I know that Sarah begins this week and we want to keep those who are going back to school in our prayers. Are there other updates or concerns? Yes, Karen. Almost at the end? Tomorrow is the last one. And you're doing wonderfully. Praise God for that. You have been lifted and carried. That is wonderful. Are there others? We want to pray for those who 
are traveling and can't be with us and send them traveling mercies this day. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful for the opportunity to be again in your house and with your people. Lord, we ask that you keep those who would normally be with us but are traveling or are with family or friends, that you keep them safe and comfort them until they can return here to be with us. Lord, there are those in our midst whom we have named this morning, those who are healing and yet those who are suffering. Lord, we ask simply that you be with all of those. And while we have lifted certain ones and we have named situations, Lord, there are for each of us persons and situations that we really just can't even say aloud. They are simply on our hearts and our minds, but you alone know those needs. Be with those of us who have those concerns in the way that only you can. Lord, keep us mindful of those around us who do not have what we have, who do not have the community or the financial resources or the connections that we have. Lord, give us the eyes to open to be your hands and heart in this world so that we may continue to be a witness for you in this world. And Lord, we pray all these things this morning in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you this morning to Becky and Neil for singing and sharing your gifts and talents with us today. Let us take a moment and bless the offerings that we have. Gracious God, we offer to you simply a token of what we have been given. Use these gifts for the inbreaking of your kingdom in this place and throughout the world. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the fourth chapter of Ephesians, 
there's a long passage, and so I'm just going to read some scattered verses, and it's starting with verse 25, then picking up again at verse 31, and moving to uh, within the first couple of verses of chapter 5. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Put away from, all, from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So in our passage today, and in, in the um, preceding chapters as we have been looking at Ephesians, there's um, some really good guidance um, but particularly the, the section for, for this week, there is, there's some good rules for living, if you will. Some, some new rules for a new life in Christ. The whole passage, uh, I've just, of course, read some highlights, is full of do's and don'ts, suggestions for relationships, for living with others, for making connections with one another, to keep in good stead with one another. I actually almost called this sermon in its first incarnation, Making Connections, because I wanted to tell you about some of the really neat things that have happened this week. And I don't see Libby right now, but this is just the neatest thing. So Libby Robinson has been volunteering with Project Outpour, which is the new uh, mobile showers program. The program's not new, we are a new host site for it. We are the East Charlotte location, which is on Thursdays back in our parking lot. And Libby has been faithfully volunteering with them each week. So she had met another volunteer, a man named Britt, and they had struck up a conversation and she happened to mention to him that the Emerald School was located here on our campus and explained to him what the Emerald School was. And so Britt turns out to have a lot of experience, just years and years of experience in, in managing and administering nonprofit schools, schools around the globe. He is an expert at schools for the children of expats, which is close to the kind of model of school that the Emerald School follows. So Britt found Mary, the director of our Emerald School, and they have now set up this wonderful um, mentoring relationship. And that was just this neat thing that I found out about this week. Also this week, I um, uh, welcomed the Medford Acres neighborhood group. They met here on Monday. They were so appreciative of being able to use this space. Uh, there were, um, I don't know, over 30 people that came to Monday Hall to express interest in gathering as a neighborhood. And it's really been a good thing for us to be uh, the, the sort of meeting point for them. The police officers that came to give that neighborhood updates uh, were here and I got to meet those. And in fact, one of those police officers who is actually replacing Ronaldo, who has been so faithful um, to us and to this area, Ronaldo is becoming a sergeant and is being reassigned. So we have a new community relations officer 
for our section. He's not new to East Way and community relations, but he is to our side of things. His name is Nestor, Nestor Montero. He's from Puerto Rico. He speaks Spanish. And so we just had this lovely conversation. And ever, since even after the meeting, we've been texting. And he would like to be involved in some of the things that our church offers, especially some of the Spanish speaking events that we offer. So these wonderful connections happened this week that were related to us and what all is happening on our campus and in our buildings and within the ministry of this church. One other thing, the, um, so that was Monday night, the um, uh, Medford uh, Acres gathering, but also Project Outpour had a quick um, board meeting uh, and they just met in the parking lot out there because they don't really have space yet. But I, I, so, since I was here, I got to welcome them. It's not a large board, uh, but they were just having a very hot meeting in the parking lot uh, Monday evening. And it turns out I know one of the guys on their board. He's one of my friends from working with folks on the street. He is one of the people in my life that doesn't have stable housing. And, um, and I know him from my time at First Methodist. And it was just really exciting to catch up with him. He has a job and uh, that was, it, it was exciting to hear that he is progressing. I have a slew of friends who live on the street or kind of often on the street and, and so forth around town just from various ministry efforts I've been involved in. And I keep up with a lot of folks, but there have been many people that I have just not been able to, to stay in touch with and so it was really wonderful to, to make that uh, connection with him again. Um, I, I miss being with folks who are in so much housing insecurity. Uh, it's probably been four or five months since I have been out on the streets, feeding people, talking to folks, um, and, and I know I need to get back out there. Um, that population in Charlotte grows continually and their needs are not that much different in the summertime than they are in the winter time. But I, that, along with these other connections, just reminded me this week of, of how important it is to be connected to one another. And that reminded me, as I am in, deeply into Ephesians, that they were about making connections both within their church and within the context that they found themselves Oh, one other thing, the, the, somebody on the Project Outpour board said, you were the church where, where there was the, the movie. I said, yes, yes, that was us. So again, making connections out there in the community. They know that we're still here, that we're still active, that things are um, happening here. And that's a, being connected to not just our Sunday morning crowd, but having people beyond our walls who are connected to things that happen on our space is, is part of what will help us to survive, to be in, in community with our community, to be in connection with our neighbors. These, this making of connections, this speaking to one another in kindness and love as the scripture admonishes us to do, following these lists of things to do and not do amongst the body of Christ, that's what this passage is all about. The works that Paul kind of lays out here, it's not so much little check mark, uh, merit badge kind of things. It's, it's really just a new way of living as the people he is talking to. It's, it's, a, it's a mark of a new life in Christ. And it gets at the heart of who the Ephesians were and what they were going through. They were, they were trying to get it together as a congregation. Um, we do these things as, as they were told to do. We do these things because we are that new creation in Christ. And we're a new creation in Christ. Remember I said last week that this letter is written to believers. We are baptized Christians. This is a message to the faithful. And so as baptized people, we're living in a new way in a new day. We're members now of the body of Christ, and that 
gives us assurance that we are not in this life alone. We're, we're part of a community from which we draw strength and we know that we do not journey by ourselves. We have neighbors in it with us and neighbors that we know that are here, that we are in existing relationship with, but there are neighbors out there with whom we need to connect as well. Was it last week we, we sang, they will know we are Christians by our love? That's such a good hymn for this section of scripture. It's just so true. The hallmark of Christianity is love, is love in neighborliness, it's love in being in community, it's love in being re in relationship with one another. I can't remember, have we talked about Stan? Have I mentioned Stan in, from the pulpit? I don't know that we have, but there is this gentleman named Stan who sometimes brings money to our church. Um, the first time we noticed it, we just opened the door and, and, and this envelope fell out. And so this envelope with money had been crushed into the, um, the, the crease of the door. So the, we were a little confused by that, but, but later um, a gentleman came by and, and wanted to give money to our church. He, he's just this delightful person who from time to time brings a donation to our church. And I see that as, as a sign of things to come, as a, as a good uh, thing for us to ha be in relationship with people that we do not see every day or every week. Stan coming to Memorial, not on a Sunday morning, but during the week to give us a financial gift, that shows that we're making a connection out there, that we are in relationship with people who don't even come here for worship. There's another part of this passage toward the end there that of the, the do's and don'ts in the, the scripture that addresses anger. Don't let the sun set on your anger. I was reminded this week of the words that St. Augustine wrote about anger. Um, when you prep for a sermon, you read centuries worth of commentaries and, and things. And so this is written several um, of hundred years, of course, after the, the book of Ephesians. But he says, hope has two beautiful daughters. Hope, anger at the way things are and courage to see to it they, they do not remain the way they are. Anger at the way things are and courage to see to it that they do not remain the way they are. I thought that was a really lovely insight into talking about that kind of intensity, anger. The prohibition in this passage is not so much about anger itself, but by sinning while angry. By all means, as again, Augustine says later, get upset by what is not of God. Get upset with what is not of Jesus. And instead of doing nothing and remaining angry, go do something about that situation. Use that anger for change. And I thought that was a good way to look at this passage. Be kind and compassionate with one another as Christ forgave you, so you are to forgive others. Talk amongst clergy lately has gotten very real as we are evaluating the state of our churches, the state of the, the church with the big C, the state of Christianity, Someone wrote recently, I didn't sign up to be a pastor in the apocalypse. None of us really did. That was not on my radar several years ago, 30 years ago. But here we are needing one another, needing to be community for, me, for each other in the midst of what seems like chaos. The headlines that, that go to clergy are 
40% of the people will not return to church and X number of people have disengaged from organized religion and people want a hybrid model of worship because quite frankly, it got kind of easy to sit at home in your pajamas and flip through channels. Those kinds of things are, are what clergy are grappling with and I am not immune to that. I, I pay attention to those, I don't know if you'd call them si signs, but they are certainly um, pieces of information. I'm trying to decide what, what holds weight and what doesn't as I read phenomenal amounts of information about how the church is acting and reacting right now. Taking care of one another as we are taken care of by God. That piece of this scripture is important. In Ephesians, we see that those who are baptized are called to be imitators of God, not just in sanctuaries, but on the stage beyond our walls, in the global village of humanity. And so I call us, I, I remind us to, to think about how we are in relation with one another, not just those that we gather with on Sunday morning and that we see from day to day or week to week, but in relation to the larger world. And as we go toward communion this morning, let us be aware of, let us be in awe of truly the connectedness that is around us. Let us be grateful that our church is participating in connecting people in our neighborhood, in our part of town, in this area. And let us be reminded way back, that we are connected to Jesus through this meal in which he shares himself with us. Communion reminds us that we are connected to others, other Christians around the world each week who also participate in this ritual, this Lord's Supper. It is a blessed experience to be part of a ritual that has been passed down from Jesus, our Savior, to the church at Ephesus, to the church on Central Avenue, known as Memorial. Amen and amen. So as we move toward the service, of word and table we will be beginning on page 12 in your hymnal I'm not sure that anything will show up on the screen so you have hymnals in your pew and we will start on page 12 Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, we practice what is called open communion, which means that our table is open to anyone, regardless of your status as a member of this congregation or of any other congregation in the Methodist Church. We see communion as a converting ordinance. You do not have, even have to be baptized. We see this as a way of outreach to the community. So all are welcome. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The way we are doing communion today is that you will come forward as you feel led. You will pick up a cup that has a piece of bread in it and a cup that has some juice in it. You are welcome to consume them together or apart. There are trash cans that you can leave those um, the cups in as you return back to your seat. But come, for the table is set.
If you will turn to page 11 in your hymnal, about two-thirds of the way down. Let us join together in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn, oh, I can use that, is going to be 431, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Now, beloved, let us go forth from this place in the name of the God who gives us life, the Christ who gives us love, and the Spirit who gives us peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.